hands wet. It's just, it's just, <laughs> Have you been playing with elephant pee again? <laughs> no, that's just know. human. Oh. Cool. <laughs> so this is getting awkward from the beginning. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. It, it's so. very unpleasant. Thank yeah. you. So, guys, uh, we will probably try not to recreate our conversations from the last few days because they were an absolute fucking disaster. Mm. Uh, so, to begin with, uh, this is obviously going to be uh, an 18 plus type of event. Uh, so, if anybody <laughs> is still with their children here, this is probably a horrible idea. Uh, I highly advise you to be responsible parents and get rid of them. It's still, it's still not too late. That's, that's the most thoughtful thing you've ever said. <laughs> so anyway, today, today we'll try and talk about uh, just some weird science, some amount of uh, just regular old stupidity, as well as some crazy things that people thought were good ideas. So to begin with, because we're kind of on a spacey kind of topic, I guess, is uh, I think we should Look at the moon. I mean, fuck Mars. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, the moon's closer. Oh, also, all of the topics that we will approach today are absolute non sequiturs. I mean, we will not even try to bridge them. Oh, there, so it's like. There's some bridges. There's some. We will well, burn I, those well, bridges. I, I deal with certain kinds of eruptions, and David deals with different kinds of eruptions. Oh, Jesus, not this again. <laughs> He's a volcanologist, so that's the, the bowel movements of the Earth. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So the moon. The moon, yes. I mean, the moon is kind of a weird place because at one point in history, <laughs> humanity had to decide what to do with it. And it sounds, really ob it sounds really strange to say that. Like, clearly we'd just try and land on it, right? But actually in the 1950s, there was a rumor going around that the Soviet Union was going to demonstrate their might by detonating a hydrogen bomb on the moon. And this rumor was going around. And, um, and like, officially, the American government was like, that's ridiculous, how irresponsible. We would never do such a thing. Quick, we need to detonate a nuke on the moon. Quick, quick, quick. So they actually come up with a secret project to blow up a nuclear bomb on the moon before the Soviets did, which is a really weird alternate history. Imagine we just graffitied the moon yeah, as the as first thing. Like as banks on the moon. Yeah, and they actually got a bunch of scientists together to try and like, so how would you nuke the moon? When, how would you do it? Would you? And they're like, we could do it. like." So the sun would just reflect off the mushroom cloud. It would look amazing. And, <laughs> and, and it turns out that they thought about this for a while, and they concluded that it's a pretty stupid thing to yeah. do, nuking the moon. Surprisingly. Yes, surprisingly. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's nice to imagine an alternate history where instead of landing astronauts on the moon, they just kept nuking it. And like, well, yeah. we'll do a bigger <laughs> nuke on the moon. And <laughs> just dodge the nukes. Just the, yeah, yeah. It's just the, all the rage in the Cold War to nuke the moon. So yeah. I don't know. Terrible idea. Hopefully they don't resurrect it. Well, is it though? I mean, it would be probably some of the best advertising you do for your space missions. <laughs> just like <laughs> NASA, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Nike. <laughs> just do it. Just yeah. do it. Yeah. Just nuke it. Just yeah, nuke it. I wouldn't recommend it. I don't know. You can nuke Mars instead. But so we didn't actually nuke the moon. Uh, I don't uh, think so. Yeah. So, uh, but we at least got some parts of the moon. Of the moon, right? I regret ever mentioning this story. <laughs> I hate this story. I mean, yes, one of humanity's finest endeavors is stealing bits of the moon to bring back to Earth, which is yes. great. You know, it's really amazing science. achievement. Yeah, yeah. For science, some yeah. of the most valuable material on Earth. Um, and it's kept in a, a, a sort of multi-layered vault um, mm -hmm. in Houston at Johnson Space Center. They keep 15% of the samples aside for things that they refer to as like terrorist attacks or hurricanes. Mm. But, um, it's so it's under lock and key, basically. It's not one? It's under lock and key. It's under many locks and keys. Okay. Yeah, you can't just walk in a there. A series of locks, like retina yeah. scans and shit. Yeah. yeah. But it turns okay. out that 20 years ago, their security protocols weren't great. Yeah. Uh, and they had a few interns that had some weird ambitions <laughs> when it came to moon rocks. And at some point, um, a bunch of interns just stole a vault containing $21 million worth of moon rocks. Okay. Partly because they wanted to sell them, but also, and this is the bit I hate, <laughs> is because they wanted to have sex on them <laughs> for some reason. On the rocks? Yeah. Why the fuck? Now, I don't know if you, have you ever had tried having sex on volcanic rocks? Well, different kinds of rocks. But not volcanic. The volcanic ones are really some stalagmites. They're really sharp. It's yeah. Like you can't really get very amorous on glass. I Do don't they're going to put a blanket on top first? They put. They said that eventually they put a duvet on top. But like these rocks are like. Jagged, horrible yeah. things. Yeah. I don't know why you would do this, but anyway, maybe they, maybe they would just arrange it around uh, the situation. Yeah. You know, it could be aesthetics. Maybe, but like, 
It's still pretty weird. It's still a pretty a weird, weird thing to do. But, that, but the guy's reasoning, of course, the guy's reasoning was he wanted to have sex on the moon. So this is as close as he could get to doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, the worst bit about this is that they involve the FBI, because obviously when $21 million of extraterrestrial material goes missing, yeah. um, they want to know what's happened to it. And they basically had to set up a sting, because they tried to sell some of the rocks afterwards. Um, and, uh, they Did they wash them off? I don't know, because on the actual F FBI report, officially it says the worst part is they contaminated these rocks, <laughs> which is, <Contaminated>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I hate that too. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Yeah, and actually, um, Tiffany so, Fowler. So, yeah, someone wrote a book about this. And the weirdest thing about this book is that it's weirdly sympathetic to the guy. <laughs> and I don't know why you would be sympathetic to a guy who thought. Well, he had to go to jail for this. Um, he did. Romantic endeavor. I mean, yeah. But how did they find out that they actually had sex on the rocks? He just admitted to it. <laughs> mm. What a flex. <laughs> <laughs> Did they waterboard him or something? I, oh, I don't <laughs> know. I thought it was the CIA, not the FBI. Ah, oh, probably yeah, different guys. Probably. But yeah, they, they got arrested for a sting operation because they tried to sell the rocks, and it turns out the FBI were on, on, on the, the wire. Yeah, it turns out if you say, oh, I've got loads of moon rocks to sell, it's kind of <laughs> sus. <laughs> it's a bit weird to say. Like, don't, that's, no. You can't really get <laughs> away say, with On that. eBay, I got, like... Half a, half a ton of moon rocks. Yeah, <laughs> used, moon rocks? used moon used rocks. Used moon rocks, yeah. <laughs> Not new. It's a whole new meaning to second hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. But that's, anyway. that's a weird thing to want to have sex uh, it's on up moon there. rocks. But it could get weirder. I mean, what's the weirdest place do you think uh, you can imagine that people can have sex in? David. So this pertains, to, there's a journal called the British Medical Journal. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> and you'd expect the most famous, well-cited paper would be on cancer or AIDS. Um, or but physics, it, you know, just... But it's on an age-old question of um, what is the shape of a penis when you're having sex? And it's different from what you think. <laughs> because the, the penis is like a cup of water. It is shapeless. It's massless. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, you can no, bend it any way you want. Okay. Yeah. So, back in when Leonardo da Vinci was doing his original um, dissections of humans uh, to look at things, he had this hypothesis that it was shaped like a banana. Because they look at a man's body and look at a female's body and they don't fit. The female's yeah. body goes up. Yeah. Do we, have, we have some images, right? <laughs> We should I, have plenty of images. I'm trying to demonstrate, but I don't know. It's the internet. I'm, I'm well, guessing it's full of images. <laughs> they put the images up? I don't know. I guess. I don't know if I want... I, there we go. Uh, ah, yeah, okay. okay, there's Leonardo da Vinci's sketches. Um, so you... Yeah, that's uh, pretty um, graphic, his sketches, along with his other scientific discoveries. But the female and male anatomy, they're not exactly like a lock and key. One of them's like a banana-shaped... Uh, lock, and the other one's just whatever, whatever you said. <laughs> but it's like and scissoring. So to resolve this controversy, they basically had to have 20 volunteers um, practice, um, be able to have sex to orgasm inside the MRI scanner. Um, Did that happen? Yeah. Many, many times. And so this is the final images. <laughs> wow. Many, many times. You say times. it like it's obvious. Yeah. <laughs> like, obviously. No, that, that's a flex. Yeah. Well, we can put people on the moon. If we can have sex on the moon, we can also um, take images of it, too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's what it looks like. It's banana-shaped upward. Um, can you get the previous picture on? <laughs> I just need to... I didn't get the topology. So, okay, so that... Okay, there's literally five feet over there. It's very difficult be? because you have to, <laughs> look at it. You have to practice. <laughs> it's five legs. Are there? I mean, look at it. It's like this, and then this, I, and there's another leg. I wouldn't think about it too much. <laughs> Stop having epiphanies. There's too much science in I this. I think that, uh, that artist was really trying to get this done quickly at work. <laughs> <laughs> and I want people to look at what they're, what they're doing. Um, uh, but do, this, you think, do you think they put that in their portfolio? I can do scientific illustrations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that image, that paper, actually, every year, the anniversary of the paper, it breaks the journal's internet. <laughs> no one can download anything from that journal because people look for this every year. And ever since then, by factor of 100, it's the most downloaded paper ever, ever found. 
Oh, I'm really proud of humanity at times. Yeah. It's, I think yeah. we diverge on that point. <laughs> well, you know, sex is great, <laughs> but diving is better. Oh, God. <laughs> I told you it's not a... The, it's a non sequitur. I mean, I mean, there's no way for me there to... There is actually a, a horrible bridge here. Okay, go. The horrible bridge. What's the bridge? So, it turns out, scientists didn't need to know this, but it turns out if you implode a human, it's bad for your health. The, the terrible for your health. If you turn a human inside out, it's yeah. terrible. Especially if it's slow, but if it's fast, it's horrible anyway. <laughs> and you have these things called diving bells, which people use... Like body to, scuffs. Yeah, 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 kind of thing. Like, yeah, these sort of things. And it's, there's like pressurized chambers to help people go quite deep underwater into environments they wouldn't normally go into. Yeah. Um, it's only a matter of time before something horrible happened with one of these. And in the 80s, there are four divers working on like an oil rig, and it had one of these diving bells. They didn't have sex in them. No, they did not. No. Thankfully. Fortunately, no. Um, but what did happen is, uh, I mean, there was a huge pressure release, but yeah. <laughs> this time... <laughs> This time, uh, a, a sort of hatch blew open, and uh, basically people were rapidly depressurized, hmm. which uh, is not a good thing, because it essentially immediately turned about four people inside out. And it is one of the grossest paper, so, scientific papers I've ever read. Well, how do you mean they, they're inside out? I mean, they well, just explode. People's livers ended up on yeah. shelves, it's their brains boiled, their like, eyeballs turned inside out. But it's like your whole body has an explosion from inside. Yeah. If the out, basically, if you change the pressure, reduce it outside, it's like you have an explosion from the inside. Yeah. One, one of them was blown through a gap that was like uh, as wide as a pencil. Like an entire person was just forced through, through, the, a, through this like pencil excellent. gap. Yeah. It's, I mean, it was painless, I guess. But, it, but the paper Jeez. also contained some of the worst sentences known to, to man. Yeah. And this is where this horrible bridge comes in. because. Scientists, when they write scientific papers, try and be like, they're quite calm and cool about it. Quite dry. The language yeah. has to be quite sterile in a yeah. way. You have to be objective about it. Yeah, but this paper has many exclamation marks in it <laughs> and uses words like grossly <laughs> and horrifically. And one sentence in this paper was, uh, for one of them, I think Diver 4, it said, the penis was intact but invaginated. Now, that is the worst word in the English language, and it basically means... Inverted oh. inside out. Yeah. Wow. They actually put an image of oh. it. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. That used to be a person, <laughs> but it was. It's Jesus. not a person anymore. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know about you, but it really put me off. Just I don't know diving. Bells. The sea. Yeah. I don't want to be imploded. Of any kind of bell. Any kind of what? Bell. Yeah. Just bells in general. I hate them. <laughs> but Jesus yeah. Shit. It's pretty. It's pretty grim. Does but this get cited though? I mean. Well, I wish it got cited more, only because one of the authors of a paper about people exploding is called Dr. Bang. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's destiny, really, isn't it? <laughs> well, I think I'm going to go. <laughs> wow, he has a limit. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, while we're on the subject of uh, massive explosions and various ways in which you can injure yourself severely, um, also, we have an astronaut, and he's kind of used to the G-forces. Yeah. Can you tell us about the experiment with the 50 Gs? What was it, the guy? Oh, that... right. So um, a, l a lot of things that we're talking about today are either experiments that were not planned, like mm. that, these divers, or experiments that you... Some experiments are only are so difficult that you have to do them yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jesus. And uh, um, Jesus. one of the big questions for... So when people go into... Uh, so we'll hear more about this in the afternoon. Airplanes and jets. They're tense. <laughs> um, you subject your bodies to very high, high uh, accelerations, so much that you can actually just get knocked out. Hmm. And so at the time, uh, pilots used to have to sort of clench their muscles and really prevent themselves Brace. from... Brace. Yeah. But that only lasts up to a limit, and people want to know what that limit was. Um, and it's not something you can exactly do with hamsters and rats because their limit's going to be different from our limit. So... There's an enterprising um, uh, scientist named Colonel John Staff who decided he would just put it to the test. And what he did is he constructed, if you ever watch Looney Tunes, you see um, rocket sleds on, uh, and they go really fast, and there's a coyote in front, but you never imagine there's a person on this. So he actually turned a very long uh, device that he turned on a rocket sled powered car um, 
for the purpose of slamming on the brakes as much as possible. That's the only way you can really achieve 10 times Earth's gravity, you know, 1,000 pounds of people on top of you. So he would do this thing, and he did it many, many times, facing forward, facing backward. Um, uh, and the, he was basically, he actually got injured so much that his eyes actually became detached. He had sort of bad vision for many years. Because when you get in a car crash, the problem is that, as we know from the last story, your bodies are basically mostly soft. We're pretty much very gooey. Um, some of us more than others. Gooey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cup of water. Speak for yourself. <laughs> and so it's basically the soft organs that, that get detached. Mm. So just like I saw, showed you the rat that was like squeezing its eyes shut, the uh, stap basically, the things that hurt most are basically the, the eyeballs and stuff that's uh, soft and floppy. Mm. But so basically his retinas detached? Or? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and I think he had vision problems for, for a long time mm. as a result. But well, he was, because of him, um, we know what the limits are, and we, they're able to design suits to sort of help, help uh, fight that, those limits. Would you say that he's seen enough? <laughs> <laughs> he's seen too much. <laughs> so, Robin, you're yes. a volcano guy, right? Yes. <laughs> What's the dumbest shit that we've done with a volcano? Oh, man. So many things. Yeah. But... Predictably, the dumbest thing anyone has ever tried to do with a volcano is see if you can set it off with a nuke. Yeah. Which sounds like proper supervillain like level <laughs> stuff. Yes. Um, but during the Cold War, when nukes were all the rage, I know they're kind of making a comeback, but you know, they were, Jesus. <laughs> they were all the rage. They're, the Soviet Union and, uh, and the US had like, they, they kind of thought they could use nukes for peaceful like excavation purposes, mm, mm. or you know, they could dig out a second Panama Canal with nukes, mm. which was an idea at one point, and they turned it down because they were like, people might get a bit upset <laughs> if we nuke a hole through a continent. Okay, fair enough. But they were like, but, but what happens if you detonate nukes near volcanoes? Yeah. What happens? And partly it was like, oh, it's to just kind of improve our detection methods. No one lives on these islands, the Aleutian yeah. Islands near Alaska at that point. Fucking let's just, yeah, let's just detonate it. But one of the purposes was like, I mean, it's, there are active volcanoes there. And they're like, yeah. could we set one off, maybe? And you imagine the meeting where someone's like, why don't we just try and set a volcano off just with like nukes? Just like popping a bubble, basically. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. But no yeah. one knew if you could, because yeah. volcanoes are quite... Big. So they, they, they detonated three uh, nuclear bombs underground um, uh, on, some, uh, on an Alaskan island uh, and Chitka, and uh, people were quite annoyed at it anyway. Um, they're worried that it would cause a massive tsunami or big yeah. earthquake. Greenpeace actually formed as a result of the protests from that. Um, but one of the shots called the Kanakin shot was, I think, the largest underground nuclear test ever, at least at the time. It was like five megatons. It's just a really big explosion. And I think some people were secretly hoping this volcano would erupt and go crazy, yeah. but it didn't. The volcano gave not a single shit about <laughs> these nukes going off near it, which is kind of comforting it's just in a, a way. Tickle, tickling you a can't just bit. you can't just you can't yeah. just kick it and be like yeah. just go, go, do something. <laughs> yeah. So it ruined a lot of supervillains' plans. But was which it like nice. near like a magma chamber or something? Oh, it or? was like they buried it. Like, it's like 700 meters down, I think, and they just sort of buried it near enough that uh -huh. they, they were like, maybe yeah. the, the shock wave would cause like all these bubbles to appear and it would just erupt. But it did nothing, which is really Can you really feel comforting. it on land? Can if you you're like outside on land, can you feel that they knocked all these bombs out? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it actually, the, the explosions are so big, it changed, briefly changed the way Earth spins on its axis. So these are not small explosions. But the volcano was like, nope. Just brushed it off, <laughs> which is, again, really relieving. But if it's like a nuke underground, yeah. Yeah. so that there's some kind of implosion happening, right? Because it, it will try and push away stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, what's left over of that bomb? Just a big fucking hole. <laughs> it's just a big hole left in the, in the ground. And they're like, well, now, that, now the island is super unstable, funnily enough. Great. You've got big radioactive holes in the ground, which is great. But yeah, it turns out you can't uh, set off a volcano with a nuke, which again, really, really nice to know. I think, anyway. But if you did want to set off a volcano... We've all been there. We've all had those days where we're like, yeah, I'm set these I mean, volcanoes just, off. I have this private volcano. I need to get going. So what would I do you know, to just you know, kickstart a volcano? Like just a give advice it, column for it evil people. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you really wanted to set a volcano off, you'd drill into the magma chamber and then pump loads of water into it. That would set it off. Because the water would suddenly turn into a, a, a vapor really violently. 
and it will just create space for more like explosions and so the magnets to get out. So don't use nukes, just just hose it down a bit. Just add water. Add water, yeah. Just add water. Yeah. It's so boring. I mean, just. <laughs> I know, right? But okay. it's it's convenient. Anyone can be a, a supervillain. Just water or mentos, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus fucking shit. But give me a heads up. <laughs> so I mean, before we we get to some of the uh, main bits of our discussion today, which is going to be um, your main focus of work right now, David. Uh, I'd like to <laughs> look at a really weird continent, also known as Australia. Ah, uh, yes. The so place where everything wants to kill you. Yeah, I mean, you, you can see that there's all kinds of fucked up animals over there, right? Yeah. And hey. Well, we are. <laughs> and I mean, uh, you, it's not obviously clear that we can always win, is it? <laughs> Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's really... One, sometimes you hear stories and you think, this must be bullshit. It must yeah. be. It sounds so ridiculous. It sounds like it bullshit. It sounds absolutely ridiculous. But it turns out in 1932, Australia lost the Great Emu War, which is exactly what it sounds like, in that the emus, which are really big, scary birds, were basically invading people's farms and eating their food, and these Australian farmers were sick of it, so they... <laughs> And they, you can't, like, tell an emu to go away. <laughs> They'll just peck you to death. Like, there's nothing you can do. It, you, can't you just strangle it? Can you show a picture of an emu? <laughs> oh, yeah. Can't you just fucking oh, yeah. <laughs> tackle it? How, how big just... are they? I mean, they're taller than us sometimes. Oh, wow. But they're quite they're hefty. They're taller than you. They're the, they are quite... I mean, they're quite terrifying, really, I think. You know, the baby ones, not so much, but the big ones. And they were like, what do we do? We need to do something. So the Australian government decided uh, <laughs> to just arm all the farmers and then bring in the military to just kill all the emus. So for a year or so, there was a, a massive campaign to ambush emus and like shoot them. And the, the, the reports from this war are crazy. They're like, one of them took 10 bullets and it just kept getting up. <laughs> and like, we hit one with a truck and it just kept it's following like Terminator. Us. My favorite bit is once they tried to ambush some emus and there was one emu on its own. You know like that scene in Jurassic Park, the clever yeah, girl team? Yeah, yeah. They got outflanked by emus. They <laughs> ran around, <laughs> knocked them down. And like, they, it really didn't work. They actually, the emus actually gain territory, <laughs> which is amazing. And I had to, and effectively, the Australian government had to admit surrender. Um, and, and someone in the parliament said, well, shouldn't we give some of the soldiers a medals? And someone said, if anyone's going to get any fucking medals, it's the emus, which is the most ridiculous statement ever made. So, yeah, we, uh, I think nature is a bit more gnarly than we, than we give it credit for. And, uh, yeah, it turns out you shouldn't fight a war with basically dinosaurs with fe feathers. But is there like a study how many bullets an emu can take? I mean, the fact they oh, can take at case. least 10, <laughs> that's a lot. How many, I couldn't take one. Probably. <laughs> you know, but at it, least 10. <laughs> but is it because of some kind of, uh, I don't know, muscles or some specific kind of uh, skeleton? I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, I think they should have just lured them all to a volcano and then set it off. Because I mean, the <laughs> what a barbecue! <laughs> I mean, I mean, the the U.S. military is giving him money. I mean, might as well research the emus. Yeah, but I don't feel I, just I make exoskeleton emus. and stuff. But do you feel threatened yeah. by emus like every just every now and then? But not really. I mean, there's some things I'm kind of scared of, like raccoons, loneliness, loneliness. Yeah, can't the, fight that. The inevitable heat death of the yeah, universe. That's true. The usual stuff. The usual stuff. Yeah. yeah. Lack of money. You can't shoot at any of these things though. Well, I mean, <laughs> you can shoot your way out of them. <laughs> okay, maybe. It's one but, way. Yeah, but yeah, don't fight emus. I think that's a lesson. So, David, uh, I heard you like drawing faces. Is this true? Drawing what? Faces. Faces? Not faces. <laughs> faces. On um, what? <laughs> so, there's some weird ways in which you can draw a face, right? <laughs> He's drawing a blank. It's amazing. I is this show the hell? fucking picture so he remembers. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So th th <laughs> there was this fucking thing about how weirdly you can draw a face. <laughs> and I don't know more. You know more. <laughs> oh, you mean uh? <laughs> I have so no idea what this is about either. So I'm really tense. drawing. Yeah. So uh, we have a part of our brain that's used for facial recognition. Yes. Right. Um, and uh, back on track. <laughs> as, a as a result, um, I mean, we're basically tuned to read people's emotions. I mean, back when we were living in tribes, 
the ability to basically see if someone's angry or sad or trick lying to you was absolutely critical. You had to do that in a split second. So much that it's actually not even under our control, that we see faces everywhere. Um, and so if there was a study, so one of my fellow Ig Nobel Prize winners um, wrote a study on how we can see faces in toast, the faces of Jesus. Mm. Pareidolia. Actually. What? Pareidolia, the word for seeing faces in places. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, you see in the clouds and you see in toast. Um, and uh, so they basically put people in an yeah. MRI machine, this time not to have sex. Damn it. Just to look at faces. And uh, they showed if you just have the smallest bits of basically mouths and noses, you basically automatically, automatically see a face. Um, yeah. So that's yeah. the face thing. Yeah. That's kind of boring, though. Yeah. I mean, it's not, not really good as the emu war. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, it, it that's that's a hard it's, thing to compete if, against, the yeah, emu war. Yeah, I mean, war. If, if we have like a scoreboard, I, I think the emu <laughs> war is so far winning. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Jesus on toast. Yeah. So back to volcanoes then. Yes. So what's the weirdest volcano that we've seen? Well, I mean, there's one in Tanzania, which in my brain I always see as Tanzania. I can't unhear that. Tanzania. Yeah. Tanzania. 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 It's the craziest country. But um, yeah, Tanzania, there's a volcano there that's probably the weirdest volcano in the solar system in any way because it erupts. So lava is normally red and hot, and if you touch it, you burn to death and die. Excellent. Which is, you know, it's a nice guarantee. Yeah. Some things in life, it's just the consistency yeah. is good, yeah. right? You yeah, know. it's a. Yeah. It's a if you, really you can lean on. If you really hate someone, by the way, you should push them into lava. Because in movies, yes. they fall in straight away. But in reality, it would take minutes. You get griddled, like on doom custard. And it's pretty horrible. Doom custard. Well, it's, yeah, that's what it is. It's basically doom custard. And this is because lava is actually it's molten rock, yeah. right? So even though it looks like a liquid, it's yeah. the density of rocks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty grim. Like, you'd yeah. be griddled for a while, your organs would, like, swell up and explode, maybe. You'd turn into leather briefly, and... But you'd be able to sink in lava. Eventually, but, like, yeah. you'd, you'd have to try. <laughs> anyway. So if you hate someone, push them into lava. But um, there's a volcano in Tanzania called Oldonia Lengai, whose lava is mm. black and silver. Sometimes it's a bit blue. Sometimes it freezes in midair. It's really strange. It's the only volcano that erupts like this that, mm. like, currently. It's quite hard to explain why scientists are still not entirely sure, but this lava is like cold for lava. It's like 400, 500 degrees Celsius, which sounds hot. That's hot. But yeah. it's the only volcano that someone has fallen into and swum out of the lava to survive. Like, I'm like badly burnt, but they actually survived, which is kind of crazy. How much oh. time was he inside? Oh, like a minute or something. You Jesus know. fucking shit. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sure that's what they were saying. But how do you here. swim in lava? I mean, it, all that water. Well, it's, it's still quite yeah. gloopy. But the lava there is so weird because the lava, this lava isn't, this lava is ten times more fluid than water. So it's really, it's super fluid. In fact, yeah. if it erupts down slope, it can catch up to gazelles, and you occasionally find just an unlucky gazelle just like in this lava. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just a weird volcano. They have these like, and I don't know what it is about scientists naming things, but they have these weird like sort of Dali-esque chimneys that are made of this froze, like yeah. weird black lava stuff. And someone decided to call them hornitos for some hornitos. reason. Yeah. And, ay, ay, ay. and it turns out that if you ever go near them, like scientists are like, you shouldn't go near them. You just shouldn't. But they yeah. do anyway. And every now and then it just sneezes on you and this black lava just goes and you, they just have to fling away their clothes to stop themselves like getting melted and burnt and stuff like that. But if, isn't it moving with some insane amount of speed though? Yeah, you can't dodge it. You can't, like, jump out of the way of these things. I don't know why, but it's apparently really compelling. But, I mean, if it's rock, if it's uh, essentially molten rock and just being shot at you with some, like, supersonic speed, yeah. wouldn't it just make a hole inside of uh, your it's, chest? It's, this one's slower. It's more like snot. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, no. if, like if you want to go to a volcano that's going to shoot ballistics at you, oh, there it is, yeah. That's the lava, apparently. That's, that's the, the coldest lava. Yeah, that's the coldest lava. It looks like it's mud. Really it does look like mud, it, but it's doom mud. <laughs> it's doomy mud. It's doom mud. It's doomy mud. Yeah, it's really strange. It's really weird. And, but apparently, it's, that's not the most dangerous thing about the volcano. Um, the most dangerous thing is when you do field work on this volcano, you have to go to the crater rim at the top. And it's a really like, thin rim. And if you're clumsy, you have two choices. Fall into the pit of lava or fall off the side of the volcano. N none of them are great. <laughs> Definitely side of the volcano. <laughs> but, but, that one. But, but baboons live up there as well. And apparently, like, you have to poo at some point when you're on this volcano. I don't know whether you'd How long you choose. Would you, you poo into the volcano? the volcano or outside the volcano? Down slope or in the lava? Is this the volcano? Yeah. 
in the volcano. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just to insult it. Yeah, yeah just, just to insult it. But apparently in when you do that, because of the smell of the poo, the baboons get really angry that you're kind of shitting on their house, so they come and hunt you down. But how long, <laughs> how long do you stay at the volcano? Like a week. A week? Yeah, if you're up there, you have to do know. science. You can't just run up there, just grab some stuff, and then run down. You have to stay up there. But you have to make no... camp. And apparently, sometimes people make camp up there, and they wake up in the night, and like this tent has just been melted by this weird lava, and they're like, lol, oh well. <laughs> Hope no one was inside it. It's just crazy. So it's the weird, for my money, it's the weirdest volcano ever. Look at it. It's evil-ish. It's like it's been possessed. <laughs> <laughs> But it does look like somebody's, you know, uh, <laughs> yes. fucking waste canal has broken. <laughs> it's just really fast. It. It's, like it's really, really fast. Yeah. Look at it. It's just, it's just so weird. It's super weird. Look at it go. I oh, know. It's really strange. It yeah. looks like something David should be a specialist in. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, this is the closest with, you know, there's connections here, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it takes 21 seconds for it to erupt. <laughs> It looks pretty long. It looks pretty long to me. Yeah. Um, it, it does look like a bowel movement in a yeah. weird way. Maybe. But then when it when it when it cools down, it turns silver. So it actually looks really beautiful after it's like frozen over and oh. eroded away because it's got loads of car. It's got um, the the lava is basically like you know you get that scum around taps like ca like calcium carbonate stuff. Mm -hmm. It's that but lava. That's what that is. Oh, so it's the specific kind of rock that yeah. makes it this like, color as well. It, yeah, it's not like any of the normal stuff that like any planet. It's like limestone made lava. It's really weird. So wouldn't that mean that basically there's different kinds of lava based on the different kinds of rock that's melted? Yeah, but almost on any planet, it's based on like this silica stuff. Like, mm -hmm. this, um, so it's really weird that in this one spot on Earth, you get like you know, kitchen scum lava <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> kitchen scum lava. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that mean that on some particular planets, there's also a probably very fucking weird volcano as yeah, well? There, yeah, it can be. There's, <laughs> there's ice volcanoes. Ice volcanoes. Which is really cool, literally, yeah. But they're, they're also very strange. Like, no one quite understands how ice volcanoes work. You know, ice floats on water, uh -huh. sort of thing. It's, okay. one of the, it's, the, it's an odd that a solid floats on its liquid uh, thing, it's just due, due to the weird crystal arrangement. It's like less dense than the liquid yeah, yeah. that okay. floats. So it's really hard to imagine how you'd get like a watery lava come out of like an icy thing. So on places like Pluto um, and yeah, you know, uh, Triton, the moon of Neptune, maybe Titan as well, there's things that look like ice volcanoes. They're basically mountains with holes in that look like they've erupted like icy toothpaste. So, uh, what? Yeah. Icy toothpaste? Yeah, so it's like really big, thick lumps of stuff that oozes out of these things. But isn't it like a geyser or something rather no, than a volcano? No, sometimes you have those, but this is like, it's like a solid s something, um, a solidy, liquidy mush coming out of like what very much looks like a volcano. And you need heat for that. You need something mm -hmm. to keep something molten in some way. And they're really weird. You can get like probably water ice ones on Pluto. They've seen a few of those. Um, you can probably get methane ones as well, but the weirdest ones, the weirdest idea is you can get ammonia ice volcanoes. Now, if anyone owns a cat, um, you know that horrible smell of cat pee? Yes. Yes. So that's like when uh, its urea breaks down by bacteria and it becomes like ammonia and it's this really acrid smell. So that if you got erupted on by a certain ice volcano, you'd freeze to death and smell of cat pee. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. What a that's, way to go. That's, that's <laughs> my plans for the weekend. But. Uh, <laughs> Doesn't that mean that there's an ice magma chamber type yeah. of deal? Yeah, it's called cryo magma. It's like a, you know, like a slushy, like an ice. No. <laughs> cryo no, magma. No, that's what planets right. do. They just make shit up. <laughs> just <laughs> like, yeah, we're going to have ice volcanoes. There might even be some asteroids where they used to erupt liquid iron. So, yeah. like, actual hev heavy metal volcanoes, which is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's weird. Basically, if you can melt it, it can erupt, sort of thing. But I don't okay, know. so uh, speaking of volcanoes that look like shit. <laughs> David, I think it's time for you to uh, tell us about your project. <laughs> so I've been working with this um, civil engineer um, on cholera detection. So cholera uh, is a terrible, uh, terrible disease. Um, you can die in three days if you get cholera, um, and it spreads very rapidly. And the way you die is basically from having diarrhea 24 hours a day. You basically have, they call it rice water diarrhea. Mm. And your body is basically like one of these ice volcanoes, except not cat piss, just <laughs> water coming out of your body. Um, and luckily, if you get a certain pill, you can actually get treated. 
Um, so in a couple days you can live. But if you're not treated, you will basically just die from dehydration. Hmm. Um, and it's usually spread in unsanitary conditions with lots of people. Um, so there's a worry of it in refugee camps. So basically, we need a way to te determine if cholera is spread in refugee camps. Um, so how do you do that? Um, maybe you could have a scientist stand in the bathroom with a clipboard and just every time uh, someone's going to the bathroom, like, uh, what, kind of, what kind of poo is that? Um, is that solid or liquid? How, how liquid? And then so, in fact, there's this thing called a Bristol stool chart that they've ranked. Um, this is the first time they actually tried to have some more scientific basis to different types of poo. Hmm. From like uh, basically small like M&Ms. Um, M&Ms. Yeah, or like chocolate balls. Chocolate balls, yes. Yeah. We had chocolate balls yesterday, so it's a... Uh, um, all the relatable. way to, um, you know, snakes, uh, fluffy, cracks, and then finally just a puddle. Yeah. Yeah. God, yeah so snakes. fluffy cracks is horrible. Yeah, the fluffy <laughs> is like if you eat like too much like us, like uh, leafy stuff. Okay. Leafy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's too much words in this <laughs> description. <laughs> Leafy. No, they've got to be really specific because they rank it one through yeah. six. But it's never been, it's always been sort of subjective because somebody has to look at it and say, oh, is that four or three? So we wanted to be able to make this um, with the 21st century. So um, we're working on a diarrhea detecting machine and a diarrhea making machine. <laughs> is it? <there> an... <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Um, surprisingly, there's very little papers written on diarrhea. Surprising, surprisingly, as well. It's mm. a topic that people have, have just avoided, um, <laughs> even though it could have lots of uh, important health consequences. So, the <laughs> diarrhea making machine is important because um, we w so we basically need to train um, a basic microphone to detect if someone's having diarrhea based on the different sounds they're making. But why is it the microphone? <laughs> um, the original idea, after instead of having a scientist, is having a nice camera, like an iPhone camera sticking out in the middle of the toilet. Yeah. But the problem is, every time you would sit down, you'd have to have all these lights flash <laughs> to basically take a really good image. And action. And that's just basically not going to make people want to do it anymore. Mm. So it has to be subtle, like a microphone. Um, so here's our diary machine. Um, it's got to be capable of making, like, basically urine. So for males, uh, the urine goes forward. Females, urine goes backward. Um, different, slightly different heights. It makes a shh. Down, you can hit the thing, and then do, 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 do for the drops. <laughs> and then we have to have the plop, 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 or the plop, <laughs> plop. I didn't um, know you're an impressionist as well. well. <laughs> I've been practicing. I'm, at this point, I'm really glad. Yeah. I'm really glad you don't use your powers for evil. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's important. Because if someone just has a super long, like after after uh, we go drinking tonight. Um, <laughs> You will be going to the bathroom, and you you got to make sure that you're not saying pushing the button for diarrhea or just peeing for a really yeah. long time. So we got to figure. Uh, and they have different uh, sort of auditory signatures. Okay, so there's the uh, I said the shh and the plop plop plop, and then <laughs> and then there's different kinds of diarrhea. Um, there's the kind that's uh, if you eat bad like uh, some kind of unhealthy food, you have a lot of gas. That's like the. <laughs> 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 Is that like the equivalent of a beat drop in a, in a dubstep song? It's like if someone threw water into your, one of your volcanoes. Oof. And it was upside down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also yeah. down. But, yeah. You know, th there was a reason why we removed all the sounds from the presentation. <laughs> but he just <laughs> went ahead and just recreated them perfectly. Yeah. There this was, was yeah, this pictures presentation. and sounds. It was a fucking disaster. Hmm. So. He cares so much for you because he spent two hours censoring this presentation. <laughs> from all the graphic, graphic things that were in there. I mean, I was listening to them in slow motion as well, and, you know, higher speed to see how the bass line would work. Yeah, you did. I was, I was hoping for that remix, but... <laughs> it's going to be it's crazy. It's going to be great, yeah. yeah. It's going to be the outro song. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. So we've got to run the... Um, basically, we have to run the machine to get the different sounds. Um, and luckily, cholera is devoid of any gas. Uh, because it's just going through your system so fast. Mm. So it's basically just like a, someone taking a hose and going... <laughs> Are you swimming? <coughs> What's this? If there's a, it I'm trying to emulate spraying the entire toilet. Like, you know, the kind that you basically have to clean the toilet afterward? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think this should win an award for, like, yeah. spoken al album yeah. or something, spoken word. <laughs> so, I mean, okay, you, you characterize all those kinds of situations. Yeah. Um, so you need to emulate them. How do you get from the real thing to the diarrhea machine? 
I don't like this bit. <laughs> I mean, how do you how do you know that the diarrhea machine would be as legit as the? Well, we need to compare itself. the diarrhea machine to human samples. So machine learning requires thousands and thousands yeah. of videos of different types of uh, going to the bathroom with like voices and things like that. So we basically, um, luckily, there's a someone's taking care of that. Um, <laughs> A YouTube uh, YouTuber named Diarrhea God, um, with 10,000 subscribers, um, has hours and hours of. Basically, he takes colonoscopy preparation and just instead of going for a three-day weekend, he stays in for a three-day weekend, <laughs> and he records the entire. He has them different soundtracks like peaceful, soothing uh, diarrhea sounds or um, party. Is that, is that party like an exercise sounds. remix? What? Like you know when people go to the gym, they need to get like hyped up. Yeah, yeah. He can, can somehow control it, and uh, oh. I mean, I definitely have experienced pretty much that entire repertoire. Um, but to be able to relive it uh, in one YouTube <laughs> click, it's, how it's can pretty useful. it be relaxing? <laughs> I mean, how? Uh, <laughs> How do those words work in this in this domain? <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. What's I don't want to know. I don't know. But right. I mean, okay. So you have those obviously real physical examples, and you have this machine that is supposed to be, you know, like the real thing. So how do you know that the machine itself will be as legit as those samples? Because you need to use it to emulate and teach the AI, right? Yeah. So I mean, how do you know that it's, you know, you're teaching it the right thing? Well, we basically have to compare, compare the recordings. And uh, the AI basically is going to detect um, if this is, um, it does this categorization, pee, poo, explosive diarrhea, <laughs> potentially cholera diarrhea. And so it's got to be as good as the human ear uh, at detecting these different ones from So there's online. like a sound signature for the different kinds of things, Yeah, yeah. essentially. You know people worry so much about the AI singularity, like when AI yeah. is going to take over? Forcing AI to listen to constant <laughs> shitting is probably the, the moment. Job. It's probably the moment it's going to be like, that's it. This is a dirty job. Kill all humans. Yeah. <laughs> no more humans. Yeah. But what does the machine look like? I mean, we had a picture of it uh, a second ago. I mean, what does it actually do? Is it like a series of tubes or something? Oh, we basically have to emulate the different orifices of the human body. Um, Excellent. Uh, males and females have different, the, the urethra, the pee pee pipe that we talked about this morning, um, uh, faces different directions. Um, the, the anus is actually very, very poorly understood. Um, <laughs> it's the strongest and most important muscle besides your heart in your body. Um, it's actually the only muscle that's always contracting, always, until you're dead. And then it doesn't contract anymore. <laughs> because can you imagine whatever important thing you're doing if you're about to kill a rhino, if you're about to do something, <laughs> and your anus doesn't do its job, you just, no one can take you seriously. You cannot continue their job. It is what separates us from the netherworld. It's just a single <laughs> muscle. Oh. Just this big. It's weirdly inspirational. <laughs> we, yeah, we, I'm surprised it's not some college mascot. Some college See, this is, You know the, the whole thing about like aliens might be listening to our transmissions. Yeah, imagine yeah. if this is the first thing they like hear. Like a three-body problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, we're not going there. <laughs> no, no. Because it never takes a break. <laughs> you never can't you never say, oh, anus, um, anus is not going to be working this day. It's going to be working the other days. 364. But isn't isn't there some different kind of uh, audio signature depending on the morphology of the anus? So if you look very closely at anuses, they're, um, they have a kind of a, they have an asterisk shape. You, you have this letter in the Cyrillic that kind of looks like a menorah or something like that. Like what? The thing with the three <laughs> things. You know that, that thing that's like the three spikes and like two spikes going down? No. Je. Je. That's what it's, anus it's looks three, like. Three, three. Yeah. Okay. Anus looks like that. Okay, great. Good to know. Uh, th but at this point, he could just be fucking with us. How would he know this? <laughs> as soon as I saw that jeu on the bottle of beer, I said, oh, that's anus. <laughs> that, is, that looks like a pig's anus. You know, I'm, I'm just really, really happy that we're having zero visuals about oh, yeah. this. It's just little blessings. <laughs> okay. So basically, okay, it looks like this. But so it they, looks like that, yeah. Because yeah. it basically has... It's got to do its job, and the thing is the skin. How do you make an airtight seal with skin? Skin is like really flexy. You don't, and you can't have any leak out. 95% is not good enough. It's got to be 100% strong anus. You don't want 90, you don't want to be anus or see anus. It has to be 100% anus. 
So, this, this is the most passionate he's been. <laughs> the whole thing. You're passionate about everything. But when you're saying 100% anus, no. <laughs> and you're like, yes! No, I was... <laughs> <sighs> so that's where the wrinkles come in, because basically you have to have extra wrinkles to provide the seal. Okay. And, and when it opens, it only opens a little bit, because we can't actually... You cannot... Your brain cannot open your anus. It's basically... <laughs> It's like your boss. You can't tell it what to do. It just stays closed. So the best you can do is force things through it, and it doesn't open all the way. It's like basically a, a crescent. Is it the you know when someone cracks open a door? That's basically like your anus. Okay, it only yeah. cracks open a little bit. And that's where just, it just Just take a sneak out. peek. Just like... What emotion yeah. are you experiencing right now? I'm, well, <laughs> I mean, it's definitely 70% cringe. But <laughs> The remaining 30% are just like a plethora of different emotions. Like yeah, it's a metal Sorrow. Yeah. No. Sorrow. Sorrow. Yeah. <laughs> For humanity. Just yeah. a little bit ecstasy. Of, a, little bit of, a little bit of like come for the evolution. Discovery. Doesn't completely wrong. Yeah, revelations. <laughs> revelations. Yeah. So basically, it's really hard to design a machine that does all this, maybe. Yeah, because you have to get all the, sound, the sounds, the sounds right. There's okay. A, I have a bunch. Something coming out from a circular hole versus a crescent anus shaped hole. A they crescent? <laughs> That's our current theory, that it's... Op no one actually knows. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> how does nobody know how a anus looks like? When it's open, you only know what it looks like when it's closed. It's like the dark side of the moon. I've seen... It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> I think Nietzsche said something about this. For you to right? see what it's right. like when you stare into the abyss, the abyss stares back. No one's willing to, no one's willing to risk it. <laughs> Because to look at an anus when it's open, it means you're going to be covered in feces. <laughs> in your eyes. <laughs> can't, can't you build a machine for this? But surely, I mean, there's plenty of explorers out there. I mean, it's or dangerous, pioneers. but... Pioneers. Yeah. Pioneers. I mean, somebody probably, <laughs> you know, just approached this with caution. If somebody in this audience knows I'm Dr. David Hu at Twitter, just uh, send me some images. Wow, that's a dangerous thing. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Send me and some images, Jesus. <laughs> Robin, do, do we have some palate cleanser for this? Oh, did you have to say palate cleanser? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> God, close your mouth. <laughs> I don't know, do we? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, that's the, the, the thing. That, is that that's the thing you're talking about? It's the jeu. Yeah, that's, the, that's what it looks like. It's oh. the butthole beer. Huh. Yeah, do we have a, how do we get out of the situation? I don't know, just do, say something. <laughs> 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 Make it good again. I just, just like, again, I'm just relieved you're not a supervillain. Can you imagine? <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe, you know. maybe something will turn you to the dark side. I mean, he basically carbonized a piece of poo. I yeah. mean, he can do that with people yeah. as well. We don't know. Yeah, they did that with like Luke Skywalker, right? Ah, Han Solo. <laughs> God, honestly. Jesus. Shit. Yeah, but uh, hmm. Yeah, it makes me want to be a supervillain more. Would be good. We could, you know, you're on the side of good. I'm on the side of evil. Volcanoes versus poo eruptions. <laughs> if we could make people explode like volcanoes Oof, when they want to. Would they want to? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, I'm, uh, count me out. Okay, <laughs> sure. So let's get back to volcanoes for just a brief <laughs> bit, just so we can end on a high note or just some space. We, we, have, a, we have an astronaut, right? We do have an astronaut. We have an we? astronaut. We do. Let's not end with the poo machine. No, it's not. It's we're, down to do the, we're, we're down in the depths now. We're down yes, in the depths. Well, in, we, in the history, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, how can you top that? You know, I mean, I just, this, a slight off topic. Uh, I kind of volunteered for this panel. Uh, <laughs> This was not my best decision. Yeah. So, I mean, space, right? It's great. Space is, it's yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, Man, not, my, not, not many anuses in space. <laughs> Maybe a few. I don't want to know. <laughs> That's uranus. The jellyfish. Jellyfish yeah. don't have them. <laughs> okay. It's but actually like the digestive system of having a mouth and two holes. Okay. That's actually an innovation. Yeah. It occurred like halfway through life. So if, if there's life on Enceladus, that moon of... Saturn, yeah. right? If you drill down it into It takes like two billion thing. years to have that idea. Do you know what happens before you have an anus? <laughs> you just have a mouth anus. Yeah. That's what oh, jellyfish yeah. have. Oh, they basically, the same thing that eat, they eat with is the same thing that they bleh. Is that worse or better? But, uh, do they use it for sex as well? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had sex with a jellyfish. Well, I mean, it's been a long summer. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, they probably just release the spermies and they go floating around and they just yeah. collect them. No, the sex mouth. came way, way later after the, after the anus. I, yeah. I yeah. think this makes me want to jump yeah. into a space volcano. Okay. I think so. so to uh, cleanse my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Once Monk other things. So I think we had one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I really want to get just like one final topic because before we go, and I think we have one about a space probe, right? <laughs> Not that kind of probe. <laughs> I my brain is so lost, like space probe. Yes, I think uh, I think we can get some of the visuals uh, for it, and you get it. Let Maybe. Me see. Oh Jesus, no. shit. <laughs> I think you're becoming memes. <laughs> You've reached the highest plane of existence. I thought this would kind of... Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, they want to hear so more about... <laughs> it's about the DART mission. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh there, is a, there is a note of hope. Yes, if finally. If you want to live in a world where David can make his diarrhea machine, <laughs> and we want, to, we want to continue this, this existence, let's not take a vote. <laughs> <laughs> Give us at least five minutes yeah. after the event. Yes. Um, Something I worry about a bit is asteroids hitting the, hitting the planet. Not these big, like, planet-sized ones that will mm. just break the Earth into pieces. Because scientists, astronomers know where most of those are, and they're not going to hit us mm. for at least a few centuries. Um, but it's these tiny, like, asteroids at the size of, like, football stadiums. Um, and uh, there's, like, tens of thousands of these out there. And mm. astronomers have found less than half of them. Um, and if one of those... If, if something the size of an apartment block blew up in the sky above Sophia, for example, for we'd example. just be a big smoking crater mm. in the ground, and you wouldn't even have seen it coming. Mm. So it turns out scientists are like, this sounds terrible. We should do something about it. And actually, they are going to do something about it. And later this year, um, um, an American-led mission is going to actually sh slam a spacecraft into an asteroid, not one that's threatening Earth but just to see if they can actually deflect it. Hmm. So instead of using nukes or anything, which is like a really last minute resort, um, scientists are actually gonna try and deflect an asteroid to see if we can actually do this for real sort of thing. And so one day, unlike any other natural disaster, like hurricanes or earthquakes or eruptions or anything, theoretically, if you know where these asteroids are, which is a separate mission, and you can hmm. just deflect them, you could cancel out this disaster once and for all. You could stop this from ever being a problem. But would you, wouldn't you need like hundreds of thousands of those probes to be able to be navigated in order to catch those uh, asteroids? Well, they're, they're, there's a, a mission called NEO Surveyor, which they're going to launch. It's like an infrared space telescope, and they're yeah. going to point in the direction of the sun, and that's going to find probably 95% of these really small ones. Mm -hmm. So if you know where they're all going, and only a few of them look like they're kind of sketchy. OK, so it, it will basically be based on specific asteroids that are coming, rather than like a, like a protective field of yeah. probes. That yeah, no, okay. it'll just be like if one okay. looks like in a few decades, it might yeah. maybe get a bit close. You could just deflect it out of the way. Basically, space insurance. Space insurance, yeah. yeah. And you could, we could live <laughs> in a world where we can finally find out what an anus looks like, <laughs> right? <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. How many, how many years do you need for that? Decades or years? Do you have a Kickstarter? Well, it depends oh. on what you're doing tonight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> OK. We um, tried. So just a casual reminder, you can ask all of your questions related to David's exploits in anuses and the like, as well as uh, volcanoes <laughs> and other similar exploding things. Uh, Petko will uh, ask those questions at the Q&A at the end. So go to slide.do with the code RATIO. This is the thing on the, on the thing. So again, ladies and gentlemen, applause. <laughs> <laughs>